And of course, in this chapter, what should come in right after we learn a new definition, but a new way of finding a probability. So this is probability rule number three on our lovely exam notes packet. It's the probability of the complement of an event. So if you have E representing any event and E complement is its complement, then the probability of E complement, which is the probability of not getting E, is one minus the probability of E. And again, <laughs> this is really just a special case of rule number one, because E and E complement are complements of each other, therefore they are disjoint. So really this is the addition rule kind of written differently. So it's also really a special, special case of rule number two, the general addition rule, because E and E complement must be disjoint. That's why it's a really a special case of rule number one and make up the whole sample space. Here, let me show you. So what's happening is that E and its complement make the whole sample space. So if you add them up, they make one, right? So that's another way to actually write this. You could also say the probability of E plus the probability of its complement, because they make the whole sample space, when you add them up, it has to be one. That's another way that some books write this rule, right? Any event plus its complement have to make the whole sample space. So they make one always. And they're disjoint automatically because they're complements of each other. They don't have anything in common. All right. So now let's put it into practice again. Uh, we're going back to our deck of cards. I love cards. So suppose you're going to draw a single card from a standard 52 card deck. Let Q be a queen, A be an ace, H be a heart, and F be a face. Oh, this all looks familiar. Okay. So again, here's our deck of cards. 52 cards total. Spades hearts, clubs, and diamonds. Never forget them, right? Okay, so what is the probability of Q complement? Mm, all right, well, the probability of Q complement will be one minus the probability of Q. So let me write that out. So the probability of Q complement is the probability of not getting a queen, right? Which is one minus the probability of a queen. Okay, well, there are four queens out of a 52 card deck. So that's really one minus four out of 52. All right, at this point, we have to take a little step back into pre-algebra and remind ourselves that one can be written anything over anything, right? So you go seven over seven, eight over eight, 20 over 20. Or in our case, because we want them to have the same denominator, we're gonna rewrite this as 52 over 52, take away four out of 52. You can do that mathematically. One can be written as any number over itself. Now, why did I do that? Well, because now they have the same denominator, I can subtract. 52 take away four is 48 out of 52. Think of it this way. There's four queens, so there's 48 non-queens, right? There's 48 cards that are not queens, right? Together, they make one. 48 and 4 makes 52, and 52 out of 52 is 1. Now, to be honest with you, we often don't even show this stuff. We kind of just do it in our heads. So we'll do that down here, and maybe that'll help you see it. All right, what is the probability of not getting an ace? Hmm. So I want the probability of not getting an ace. That is 1. Well, let me put it this way. That's the probability of ace complement. Right? The not, the negative voice in there, means I want the complement of ace. And according to our rule, that's 1 minus the probability of ace. Well, that's 1 minus, there's 4 aces. And again, we're going to kind of skip over this 52. You just imagine it in your head. There's 52 cards total. Four of them are aces. So 52 take away 4 is 48. And away you have it. All right, now let's get away from the aces and queens and let's get to something more interesting like hearts complement. So I want the probability of not having a heart. We actually saw this listed out on the previous page. If you don't have a heart, jokes aside, <laughs> right, you have a spade or a club or a diamond. So it's one minus the probability of a heart, right? which is one 
minus, there's 13 hearts. Okay, so take 52 cards in your head and take away 13 of them. And how many would you have left? Right, because in other words, you're turning that one, if you will, into 52 over 52. 52 take away 13 is 39, see? Because there's 13 clubs, 13 spades, and 13 diamonds. 13 plus 13 plus 13 makes 39. And again, I'm not bothering to reduce it. It's not worth it to me, for me to reduce the fraction. It's not really relevant to the problem. All right, what is the probability of getting a card with no faces? So I want no face, right? Well, that's compliment because they're doing negative voice there. I mean, they, they didn't say the word not, but that's what they're saying. So I want face compliment. So I want one minus the probability of face which is one minus, there's 12 face cards. So again, envision in your mind 52, 52 take away 12 is 40. There's 40 non-face cards in a deck of cards. So you can see the complement rule doesn't actually start out that difficult. The one tricky part is the math portion here to kind of imagine that one is 52 out of 52 in your mind. And that's true for any particular problem. This one's just always 52 because it's a deck of cards. Every problem will work similar to this, similarly to this.